Ah, the ring-necked pheasant, so pretty. The red, the green, the lies. So let's take a look at the origin of the ring-necked pheasant. Um, a lot of people probably think they're native to the United States. They're wrong. They are from Shanghai. What I'm questioning is the origin of the story. Um, let's look. Originally an Asian species, the ring-necked pheasant was successfully introduced in North America in 1881 and into Iowa about 1900. <clears throat> Iowa's first ringnecks were introduced accidentally when a severe windstorm wrecked the pens of game breeder William Benton of Cedar Falls, releasing 2,000 birds. <clears throat> All right. Let's look up this William Benton of Cedar Falls. Iowa Pay. Yep, let's go there. I'm going to flip the screen and go to desktop site real quick, so stay with me. Report of the Iowa Game Survey, Chapter 3 Iowa Pheasants. <laughs> The first successful pheasant planting in Iowa was made by accident. William Benton was the agent of fate in this enterprise. Benton was an Englishman who had settled in Cedar Falls, where he, had, where he plied his trade of carving tombstones. Being English, he doubtedly treasured recollections of well-stocked car, blah, blah, blah. Why do they always fill this with crap? It is uncertain what year Benton started operations or just constituted his original stock. Local residents say he got his birds from Gene Simpson of Corvallis, Oregon in 1899, but Mr. Simpson's books show no sales to Benton until 1906 and 1908. Others say the stock was imported directly from Asia. Mr. Simpson questions 1899 is too early, but there may have been even earlier plantings, so nobody knows what the hell's going on. Basically, Sounds like that everybody did whatever the heck they wanted to do. Nobody took any records of anything. But, if you ask me, and let's just Google, let's go back here. This doesn't talk, this talks about the Danny. Native to Asia, the ring-necked pheasant was first introduced as an Oregon game bird in March of 1881 when United States General Owen Denny and his wife Gertrude shipped 60 of them from Shanghai to the Willamette Valley. The introduction was a success and the birds quickly spread to nearby counties. Now in 1881, how would, what would be the mode of transportation? to get from Shanghai to Oregon. It would have to be by ship. How long's that take? I would like to know. I don't know how long that takes. I don't know how long it takes for pheasant eggs to incubate, but if it's any sort of trip at all, Likely, the eggs would hatch on the boat, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but you'd have to keep them warm and feed them. Um, I guess I don't... Where am I going with all of this? I think the whole story's crap. And I think the birds just came with the Mongolians when they crossed the Alaskan land bridge. I mean, look at this. Look. Let's just Google Mongolian pheasant. Now, that's a Mongolian pheasant, and we know there was a Mongolian land bridge, and that's the frickin' pheasants that we have in North America. I don't know. I mean, they gotta complicate it by throwing all these... 
words and verbs in there that don't even matter when all you have to do is look at it. It's right there. There's a land bridge. Same birds. They came with the people or they came themselves. They didn't come from no organ couple. Did Native Americans eat pheasant? Most historians believe that the wild fowl they ate was more likely to be goose, duck, and pheasant. The birds were roasted and stuffed, but with a different kind of stuffing than we use today. Their stuffing was made of onions and herbs and possibly some cornmeal and cranberries. Thank you for the recipe. The Oto Missouri tribe that's by me, they were here from 1855 to 1881 when they had to leave. 1881. So they were already eating pheasants by the time the couple in Oregon got the pheasants. Boo.